Man's journey across time has seen a continuous molding of the elements of nature into tools of utility. He has always fused his creativity and the dexterity of his hands into these elements. Every frail or robust artifact thus born is an important milestone of our civilization. Man is marched across the millennia in search of fulfilling basic needs and his limitless creative thirst. Pottery is one of the earliest forms of human creativity and artistry. In primitive civilizations, pottery works were coarse and unshapely handmade utensils. With the invention of wheel, potters give definite, varied and elegant shapes to these wares. The history of pottery in Kashmir stretches down to 4,000 years. The craft is practiced even today in certain pockets of Kashmir. I am Asadullah Kumar. I am in the Straits since childhood. I inherited it from my ancestors. Earlier it was good, but now we are not earning much. We sell our products door to door, but there are no takers. At times, we do not earn even rupees two a day. Asad's day starts with an early family meeting to plan out the schedule for the day. He has an extended family of three daughters and three sons, and everyone must give him a helping hand. It's a hard life for us. We have to go up the four kilometers to fetch the mud. Father has to go deep inside the cave and be fair for his life. It's better we switch over to some other work. There are little returns of our hard work. So crucial decisions have been taken. The family now treks towards the cave.
cave is a dangerous place to be in. It may give way. So only Asad and his son crawl in. The rest stay out. Asad's experience has taught him how to dig safely without bringing the cave down on him. With bag loads of mud, the trek back home is equally tough. Back in the village, Asad's neighbor has already got the mud. He is busy putting it to various shapes. I'll finish this work in three to four days. After that, I will get more mud and make more paths. When around 200 of them are made, we will bake them. Getting the mud is tough. We have to go 20 meters deep inside the cave. We do not earn much, at times not even rupees 10 a day. My son has studied up to 12 standard, but he has to go out for work to sustain the family. This trade is hard for our women. They work down to dusk. My wife is already out selling the parts. Asad's wife is busy breaking up the mud to make it fit enough for kneading. And here comes more mud. That means more work ahead. And now it's Asad's turn. While he's busy kneading the powdered mud, his family retires to some hard found moments of rest. This also gives the family time to attend to scores of household chores. Asad's daughter finds time to spend some wool and add to the family's income.
lunch is already late. So Asad's daughter gets down to some quick kitchen work. But Asad's wife will have to forgo lunch. She's busy varnishing up the wares. Meanwhile, the family breaks for lunch. The pots are now ready for baking. It has taken 15 hard days to get here. The baking process is no less tough. The unbaked pots have to be stacked up very carefully inside the furnace. Next, firewood, twigs and cow dung are put in place inside the furnace. The opening is sealed up with mud. This ensures an ion heat radiation inside and also maintains a constant optimum temperature so that the pots are properly baked. Things may have gone fairly well, but Asad has one worry. Should it rain, all hard work would be lost. All Asad can do is pray to the heavens. And as night falls, Asad's prayer seems to have found favor. Meanwhile, the furnace will smolder on till morning, gradually baking up the pots inside. Time for a break. And why not? After a long haul, the pots are finally done. It's a big occasion for Asad's family. They celebrate it with a little fiesta with friends and neighbors. The kids breaking their song. The song is itself played to the beats of one of Asad's products, the Tumbakhnari. It's a traditional Kashmiri percussion musical instrument. The 
the fun doesn't last long. Out from the furnace, Asad checks his pots for possible cracks before they take him to the market. The most crucial part of the trade begins now, that is selling. Interestingly, the marketing is exclusively done by the women. Piled up in a wicker basket, they take the wares to the nook and corner of the valley, selling them door to door. Some shops in the valley also stock up pottery ware, but businesses lack. People don't buy these pots. I wonder what has happened to this trade. Tin, plastic, copper and steel have placed it. Earlier, we used to make huge earthen containers for grain, water and other things, but no more. We hardly make 10 to 20 rupees a day, so I had to take this embroidery work to sustain my family. Earlier, we used to make toys. Today, even with paints and varnish, I can't find any buyers. Who will play these earthen toys when there are electronic ties around? Consequently, shopkeepers have to turn to other vocations to sustain themselves. and varnish turn these earthen pots into attractive art pieces. But even with this ornamentation, buyers are scarce. This trade was our bread and butter. These products were popular among tourists, but they did not come here anymore. This trade is finished. All day I sit idle waiting for customers. My children have taken to other jobs. We can make very decorative products which can match china wear and other ornamental stuff. But what is the fun of making them when it does not sell? We are now back in Asad's village. The mood is a little relaxed, but life just as tough as before. Can the pottery trade support and sustain the potter's families? With the shrinking market, they have little hopes and many fears for themselves, for their families, and for this 4,000-year-old art.